What's up guys? So, second video, part two. I want to talk about falling off. You know, when we decide that we want to exercise and eat right, we're going to do it. We get so gung-ho and big people are funny because big people will like throw everything out of their house and we will like, we'll tell everybody, this is it, this is it, this is it. And then the funny part is we already have the excuse and the bullshit lie and reason why we already failed so we could tell people, right? It's always easier to say, oh, my knee hurt or my back hurts or I stubbed my toe and, you know, then life got in the way and I couldn't do it and this and that. I was famous for that. Everybody knows I've had five knee surgeries, so to me, I could just use my knee, right? Because then people would be like, well, you know, he does have a bad knee. So it was like this, like, forgiveness card. <laughs> I used to sabotage myself on days that I was perfectly fine going out. I could have exercised, but I would convince myself that my knee was killing me. And I probably shouldn't walk today because then I probably won't be able to walk for the next few days. So then the next few days I would get pumped, like I'm gonna get ready, I'm gonna get ready. And then all of a sudden I'd see television or something, I'd start watching TV and I'm like, oh, I can't miss this part. But I might've already seen the movie seven times. And everybody asked me, how'd you get past that? You know, it's really crazy. I, to this day, okay, almost five years after losing 225 pounds, I still, to this day, have to convince myself to go and freaking exercise. I have to convince myself it's better to eat chicken and a vegetable and a fruit than it is chicken nuggets. It's a battle. You know, some people have adapted the lifestyle and habit where it's like, it's not even, you know, it's not even a different thought. It's just who it is. What about all of us? What about someone that's trying to rally for us? And that's why I wanted to start doing these was every day I own a company now. I own two companies actually. My training studio, clients are busy. I'm in my gym setting 12, 13, 14 hours a day. There are days where I just do not feel like absolute at all working out. I don't want to do it. It's the last thing I want to do. Even though I'm around the environment and you see people changing and you see the motivation and everything, even after I've lost the weight, even after I've put on the muscle, even though I've done certain things, I still have to remind myself why the fuck I have to do this. And that's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to have reasons. And I don't want it to be a near death experience or someone telling you you're gonna die tomorrow if you don't do this. You don't need that kind of bullshit. You need to start to understand that this is for our heart. This is for what the next five, 10, 15, 20 years. On the personal side, in my 20s, I ran really hard. Life was money and girls and cars and gambling and alcohol and a lot of cocaine and I never really thought I was even gonna make 30 and then all of a sudden I wake up 30 and I'm not feeling good I'm all of a sudden 31 32 and I'm still not feeling good but I'm getting bigger and I'm getting bigger you know I never planned on what my life would be after 30 years old I make 35 I'm 485 pounds and now I have a doctor, several, telling me, hey John, this doesn't look good. You know, I went to a sleep study and found out that I wasn't even really sleeping. I was waking up in the middle of the night, choking, having to run to the mirror, in the middle of me choking, flip on the light and convince myself that we're not dead, we're, we're okay, to calm myself, just to be afraid to go back to sleep. I would have died probably in my sleep or trying to wake up and I probably would have killed over. I had terrible cholesterol. I always had a pretty good heartbeat, but I had terrible cholesterol. Now some days people are saying, well, cholesterol doesn't really matter, different numbers for different things, and that part's true. But let's just talk about genetics. Let's talk about our family, where it's come from. 
I don't have my father in my life. I haven't had him since I was eight years old, but I have found out that he has a mechanical heart and he's on a heart transplant. I found out that my aunt just had a six-way bypass. I found out that my grandmother had heart failure. Guess what? <laughs> I kind of have a feeling that my heart is probably gonna say, fuck you one day. So, that's my motivation. I'm now 40 years old. So when I didn't think I was gonna make 30, I didn't think I was gonna make 35, well, now I'm at 40. So what happens if I make 45? What happens if I actually make 50? Fuck, what if 60 comes around and I'm still here? Why not today? Not tomorrow, not Monday, not three Mondays from now. Why not today? And that's when I came to that conclusion. It wasn't a Monday when I started. I tried to start like 18 Mondays and every 18 Mondays I failed because I waited for that day. The day that it actually happened when my buddy had his brain aneurysm, it was that morning I went for a walk. That's what scared the shit out of me. It wasn't my sleep apnea because I already had the machine. I was already feeling better. It wasn't because I was, you know, thinking about all the great things. No, I had to have this tragic thing happen and then I had to feel like a fucking loser, asshole, piece of shit. We're gonna be real here, so I told you guys, you guys are only gonna get real for me. I felt all these things because I was so fucking fat, I couldn't fit through the door to save my friend. That sucked. That sucked in a really big way. So, there's a lot of you that are looking for every reason to start and then you have five reasons to stop. And that's what I hope that we can get through all of this together. Your kids go to school, you're at work, you have an opportunity at a lunch break to go for a walk. Your kids get home from school, they play outside, you have an opportunity to do something in your living room while your children are playing. Yes, we're tired. Yes, we're financially strapped. Yes, we're stressed to the max. This entire country's stressed to the max. But there is time to do something. There is time to actually take the time to do something for yourself. You may have a shitty marriage. You may have a shitty relationship. You know, you may have, to, you may be this serving woman that has this man that expects his meal to be on the dinner table at, you know, 5.30 and at breakfast at seven o'clock or whatever. I have a client that's like that. I have a client that can only work out at a certain time of the morning, early, because she has to be home and that food has to be ready. But she's made it that time. I'm not anybody to judge her to say, leave that asshole, but that's not my thing. My thing is, is that I work with this person because she's asked me if I'm going to do this and I need you as my support system, could we be here early? Yeah, I can be. Of course. Is it my job? No. But it's something that I want to do because it's one way to help somebody. So if there are those of you that are out there that are in that type of relationship, you're not alone. And they are making changes. They are being successful at what they do. But how do we get to that point? How do we get to a point where we finally say enough is enough? And I don't want people to have to get to that point. I'm simply talking about a walk. So each every day that I would walk to the end of the block and I would want 10 more nuggets, I started writing those things down. In the last video, I talked about this. I started writing everything down, my emotions, my feelings, how I felt after my walk. Was it as hard? Was I just really being a friggin' pussy because I didn't want to walk that day? But there is time in your life. There's time, and that's what I finally realized. I realized there was a choice as to what I was doing. There was a choice as to what the television was saying. There was a choice that I, I was waiting for the next commercial, you know, shit. Oh, wait, I'll go to the next commercial. I'll go to the next commercial. Next thing I know, I'm three shows deep into the next fucking commercial, and I still didn't get off the couch. There has to be a turning point. And for me, my turning point was, well, <laughs> the funny thing is, there was DVR at the time. I'd go back and watch it if you like television. You know, I used to work 14, 15 hour days. I do now today, but my other career, I would work a lot of hours. So TV or even PlayStation was my, was my one hour of just de-stress. I'd put on a game, I'd play for an hour, and it was my de-stress until I found what 30 minutes or an hour of exercise de-stress would do, 
and then my life started to change. You start feeling better. You start sleeping better. As you start exercising a little bit, you start not wanting to eat all of those foods because you're eating these foods and you're saying everything that I just worked for, all the sweat, all the out of breath, all of this I just did, I just ate everything and I just negated every friggin' thing I just worked for. So now it becomes a game. And that's why I try to tell people, learn to play the game. And don't set goals that you can't see, right? When I was 485, I had this goal of taking my shirt off at the beach and strutting down the fucking shore. Guess what? Unless I didn't really think before about all the skin I would have and my titties and my stomach, I didn't think about those things. Right? You don't think because you have these such these huge goals and then you set yourself up for failure. You truly do. Because I haven't started my stuff down the beach yet with my shirt off. Haven't done it. One day, maybe I will. One day, maybe I won't. I'll run down that fucking beach though with a shirt on, but I can still play it. I can still run and I can still do it. You don't have to call 911 because I'm out of friggin' air. Set realistic goals. And I always said, always set a goal that you can actually see. For me, it was the stop sign. If I can make it to the stop sign, I can make it past the stop sign. Get a pair of pants, one size smaller, not 12 sizes smaller. Put it up on a wall. Yes, tack some friggin' na nails or tacks on your wall with a pair of pants that you visually can see that you wanna get in, or a dress, or, or sexy underwear and bra, you know, if that's what you want. But you need to have a visual goal that's realistic. Big people set these huge goals. I'm gonna lose 50 pounds. And then when you don't even lose three pounds, you cry, you bitch, you blame everything on everyone else and anything around you, you blame it for why you haven't lost three pounds. And at the end of the day, everyone's kind of fucking looking at you like, did you do the work? Nine times out of 10, we didn't do the work. I didn't do the work. I just walked. Like that was it, I was just walking. And that's when it was really gut check time for me. It was really that thing where it's like, man, I've become such a nothing. There's no substance to me. I'm not a, I'm not a man. I'm not even a person that I can't even, I can't even go a day without eating. Sure, it's an addiction, but you have to be able to be willing to work on your addiction. Now, I'm not saying people with addiction, so I'm gonna clarify this in my video because some of you guys will send me a message like, what does that mean? I am not at all saying people with any addiction is a bad person or they're weak or anything. We are all weak. We are all a victim to our addiction. But there has to be a point that if people have offered so much help, at some point you have to be willing to want to take that help. Or you have to shut the fuck up and stop blaming anyone and everyone as to why you're addicted. It's different when you're a five or six or an eight year old or a 10 year old child and all your parents do is keep eating like shit and feeding you the same garbage. Okay, that's a victim. They don't have a choice. I feel terrible. But an 18 year old or a 25 year old or a 40 year old person that has a choice, that can read, that can take the advice, can watch videos to actually make changes and you choose not to and still blame people, those are the people I got a fucking problem with. So for those people that want to clarify again, yes, addiction is nothing to be made fun of. You're not a pussy because you have an addiction, but I do have a problem with people that with an addiction that don't want to learn that do not want to take any step and then blame everyone else as to why you still can't lose weight, that's my problem. So, I hope that part cleared that part up. For me, this is how this video will end today and this is what I did for the first three months and this is everything. So the few people that are trying to get it, the few people that want to try something, here you go. For the first three months, 90 days, I got a calendar, I marked day one, I marked day 90. I made a bet to myself that every single day for one month straight, I would go for a one mile walk. Now that sounds far. If you have to start doing a half mile, then you start doing a half mile. But that was my visual goal, was one mile. I got in my car, I drove to the stop sign, I drove to the next stop sign, and I drove around my house to know exactly where one mile was because in my head, I couldn't make more than a mile. Like what if I went 1.1? Shit, I probably couldn't get home, God forbid, right? So I made a perfect mile, but I visually could see that mile. Within the first two weeks of walking that mile, I was barely out of breath. Two weeks, 
14 days, I was barely out of breath. So I got back in my car and I drove around the block a few extra times to see what a mile and a half was. The next two weeks, which would make it five weeks, I just looked at the paper to tell you guys, in the first five weeks, I was doing a mile and a half a walk. I lost 13 pounds. 13 pounds that usually came off was water, was stuff that was stuck to me that was just like, man, I didn't need to get out of you. I need to get away from you. Then all of a sudden, my egg sandwiches didn't start having so much butter. They just had eggs and a little bit of bread. That was my breakfast. Four eggs, two pieces of bread, some butter in the pan, not all over the bread and the pan, and that's what my breakfast was. For lunch, I would usually have a protein shake. Protein shake had banana in it. Protein shake would have some apples or pears and some spinach. I then created the ogre green shake. For after that, I might have had apples and peanut butter. I might have had something, or sometimes I didn't. The time, at that time, people were saying, oh, that's terrible, John, you can't do that. You have to eat every two hours. You have to eat all this protein. So I did. But in my heart and in my head, I wasn't, I wasn't really full and I wasn't really happy that I was eating so much because it was all the foods I really didn't want to eat, but I knew I had to. So I started working on a balance. But you know what? For the first year, I didn't find that balance. So you guys have to be willing to understand this is an investment long term. There is no short term investment return on this. Your ROI, right? Your return on your investment. It's long. It's not a short thing. You little skinny fuckers that have a wedding to go to or squeeze into a dress that needs to lose five pounds, cool. That's a short term investment. For me, for you guys, most of my people that watch me, most of my world, my gang, my biggie gang, this is a long term. Man, this is, you know, this is, well, it's five years so far. So when you look at that, I don't expect this to be perfect. So what I want everybody to do today after this video is I want everyone to get that journal a piece of paper. I don't care how you do. I was at Walmart yesterday, 99 cents. I didn't even think they still made things less than a dollar, 99 cents. Okay. There was notebooks in the school section because they're trying to blow them out. And mine actually had Snoopy on the front and I'll be anybody up that thinks that my Snoopy is, is funny, but get a notebook, just write down. I went for a walk, two houses and back. I took my child for a walk. I limped my big ass with bad knees and a bad back up the block for a little bit. And I turned around, just start writing that down and then I want you guys to actually write down everything you ate. I want everything that you ate today, tomorrow and the next day. Now, whether one of you does this, 10 of you do this, I want you guys to reply to this video in the comment section. Okay. I keep pointing down. I don't know why I keep doing this. Me and technology still don't get along. I want you guys to write in that comment section, everything you did for that day. I did to walk. I didn't walk. I ate like shit. I didn't eat like shit. And all the people that ate like shit, I want you to write in the comments what you ate. Now that takes a lot of balls to do because you're going to be, you're going to be set out there to ridicule, right? Someone's going to try to say something or some idiot's going to come into my, my, my YouTube and they're going to say, Oh, look at this fat person that ate all this food, blah, blah, blah. Let them. Let them, let them, let them. I, we've dealt with this. This is what I laugh about. For the last 30, 40, 50 years, we've been called fat. We were called slow. We were called fat fucks and all these other things and oompa loompas and everything. Yet, why does it affect us now? Why does it hurt our feelings so bad now? We should have some of the toughest skin. And to all the people that say, well, I'm so tired of being called fat, then stop being fat. That is what this all comes down to. I've always said it. There's two hards. It's hard to be healthy and it's hard to be fat. Pick your heart. I'm serious when I say I want you guys to get a, di a diary, log it down and I want to see it. And if some of you guys don't want to publicly do it, direct message me, email me, john at ogrefitness.com or john at truegritllc.com. Both work the same. I have two different companies. I got two different emails. You guys just send me an email, send me a private message, however you want to do this. But this is what we're going to start doing. First step journal. Once you get the journal and you prove to me the journal, I will start doing more videos on actual foods, actual meals, actual menus. And all we're going to do is walk right now. Ain't no fucking jump in, no jump ropes, no burpees, no stupid shit. We're just going to simply go for a walk. Now the next video I'm going to talk about, I want people to see how far they can walk. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. Send me a message. Let me know. We will talk very soon. See you guys.
Did I shit off yet? Okay, bye.